Hey, Brent Porcio, thanks for tuning in again. Today we're gonna to be talking about a great topic, a topic that's a hot topic right now, travel baseball, showcase baseball, uh, and the baseball culture here in America. I put out a video recently on my social media talking about how international players have started to uh, dominate more of Major League Baseball. And up to the point, I think, of peaking at 48% of Major League players at one time were international players. And in the video, I talked about how I believe this is a direct correlation to a failing culture here in America. And so I want to discuss that today. I want to dive into some of the science around it. Not that there's a lot of science showing why uh, American players are kind of losing their dominance. And I know I'll make a point here. It's, it's not a, like a bad thing that they're losing their dominance. The, the game is, is really fun to watch. I'll, I mean, more talent than we've ever seen before. And yeah, there is a boom in baseball around the country, but I believe there's a decline in baseball in America and there's a growth around the country. And I think that's why this is happening. And I'd like to see America doing better in their own game. And, <clears throat> you know, if you look at, say, the Latin player, and the Latin player is a big part of those international players. And for example, like the Dominican Republic, I think there's something of like over 100, maybe 100, close to 200 major league players from the Dominican Republic. And, and, and those are active players out of thousands, right? And you know, and, and there's, there's roughly around 400 of American players. But if you look at the population of these two, um, you know, these two co countries, ultimately, yeah, is America, and we know the population is 330 million or somewhere around that. And we know the Dominican population is around 11 million. So to see almost half the amount of active major league play players are coming from a country that has, you know, significantly less than one-tenth the amount of people um, just shows that America isn't performing that well in their own sport, meaning own sport, meaning the sport that was created here in America. So wh what is the, the problem here? And, and I really do believe we've, we have a real bad culture. So we have a, a, this travel ball culture, this show, showcase culture, um, diving into the history of that. We've seen this, I've seen it over my lifetime. We've seen showcase travel ball just change and, 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 and grow so much. Uh, of, uh, of consuming the the industry and like I think a lot of it to do is the failures with rec baseball a lot of it's to do with the obsession of specializing into one sport um, a lot of it to do is how much uh, I guess the business um, social media probably made it easier to build businesses and, and, and more businesses in the world of baseball but I think to the point to the detriment of the young player today I believe player development in America is far inferior to player development uh, in other countries. I'm gonna specifically talk about Latin countries, um, and, and I like to use the Dominican Republic as an example. So for example, you know, I, I've never been to the Dominican Republic. Uh, I know if y'all seen who works here at Top Lossy, Alex Lozado, he's from the Dominican Republic. I've got a lot of information from him. And, uh, and, and we're also, too, we're starting to really do a big side of Top Lossy, uh, Top V Latino. So go follow us, Top V Latino, on social media. A lot of things are being translated into Spanish. But if we look, if we paralleled someone growing up in the Dominican Republic and someone growing up and playing baseball in America, it's going to be very different. You're going to see a lot less travel baseball, showcase baseball, being played in the Dominican Republic, specifically if you're an elite player. You're going to be more focused or you're going to be more invested in developing your skills and real player development than you are going to be playing. So you're definitely going to see a huge difference. And I think a lot of people out there are going to be like, well, why is that a bad thing? Why, why isn't it good that major league or players from America are playing so much travel baseball? And, and, and why is it better that in the Dominican they're focused more specifically at elite level of developing skills? And, and then there's going to be criticism of, well, how can American players do that kind of development like they do in the Academies of the Dominican Republic when school is almost a uh, second priority as opposed to first, and America is more of a first priority. And I'm not trying to get involved there, but I do believe we need more of a player development system here than just a showcase travel ball system. I think it really kills the nature of the game to 
get kids striving for the top or reaching out for the ultimate goal of being at the highest level. Because a lot of those excitements of growing up and idolizing major league players and watching, you know, and seeing their careers blow up in the World Series or whatever, I think a lot of those desires for them to do it themselves can be fulfilled very young. Like they can play in some national travel ball tournament and win the whole thing, and get these huge trophies, huge rings, and it pretty much almost is, in their eyes, identical to the experience of winning the World Series in Major League Baseball. And it almost fulfills those dreams and those desires they had at a young age. And <coughs> specifically when I grew up, that you never had uh, those kind of celebrations. You, you know, if you won a high school championship, you'd get a ring way less the quality of a ring you'd get at the major league level. So that's definitely been a big changer. And I think we call, we call this trophy baseball. So has trophy baseball corrupted the uh, game here in America? Because we are not seeing trophy baseball in places like the Dominican Republic. You know, it's kind of like a privileged uh, aspect of the game that doesn't really exist in the Dominican Republic. But let's look at some studies here. Let's look at the studies and see what are the studies saying? Is there something here that, that it's true that travel baseball, showcase baseball, is the demise of uh, the baseball culture in America? And you're going to see there's a good chance th that this is the case. And I'm just starting off with the first study here called Risk Factors for Shoulder and Elbow Injuries in Adolescent Baseball Players. If we go to the conclusion of this study, it says practicing, pitching practices were significantly different between groups. So you had a healthy group and an injured group. And it said, actually, let me go exactly where it talks about showcase. Here it is. It said the pitchers were more frequently, or these pitchers in the injured group, were more frequently starting pitchers. They pitched in more showcases and pitched with higher velocity and pitched more often with arm pain and fatigue. So pr pretty general uh, study here looking at injury and finding that injury occurs when we throw too much and we th throw to perform and we throw hard and showcases typically uh, represent that. They represent a game that has a lot of pressure, a lot of a big urge to perform at a high level and overthrow. And, and so you're going to see a plethora of studies that show showcase baseball has a high correlation to injury. So for example, this study here said peak velocity, or let's name, the name of the study was ulnar collateral ligament tear, that's the UCL of Tommy John, and elite baseball pitchers. So basically looking at um, who had more reconstruction of the elbow, more Tommy John surgeries. And at the conclusion of the study said peak velocity <laughs> or what, what, what was the strongest factors driving uh, Tommy John surgeries? And it said peak velocity was the strongest predictor. We know that. The harder you throw, the more vulnerable you are to injury. With elite, and this was with elite pitchers before initiating professional careers. So basically those pitchers that were elite, that were trying to throw harder, younger, they were more prone to injury. Elite amateur pitchers attended more showcase at young ages in a decade-long trend. Right, so over the past 10 years, we saw elite pitchers in the study attending more showcases as well. And it said overall, the variables included in this multi-variable analysis were, were weak predictors explaining only three. Okay, so basically, and here, here is one when I win the results. That was from the conclusion. It says right here, it says elite pitchers with early UCL reconstruction participated in nearly twice as many showcases compared with the late UCLR group, meaning pitchers that waited longer to attend those showcases. The ones that elite pitchers that attended it early, more prone to Tommy John surgery. Okay, and it said the mean number of high school showcases that elite pitchers attended more than doubled during 2011 to 2020, and the mean age at which pitchers attended their first high school showcase steadily declined. So basically what it's saying, over the past 10 years of this study, there was a boom in elite players attending more showcases and an even younger age, there was younger ages attending those showcases. And that was a big predictor of injury. So the studies here are basically saying it, it's obviously been a trend to attend more showcases, even to a younger age. And we're seeing it link to injury. So, and then that becomes a question. Are players struggling to get to the highest level in our culture? you know, where uh, international players are having more success, specifically from areas have way less the population, way less the numbers, they're having more success than us. 
is that because our elite players are getting more injured because of this you know, drive to attend more showcases and attend showcases earlier and also to throw holder. And, and I'm gonna go a little bit into the velocity factor at the end. And here's another study. Ulnar collateral ligament, that's the UCL, uh, tear in elite baseball pitchers. Do high school showcases expose, uh, predict, or do high school showcases expose pitch predict injury or exposure predicts injury? And let's try to get a summary here real quick. Something it said, um, I think it was down here. It said, there it is, in the conclusion, peak velocity recorded at the high school showcase events is the strongest predictor of UCL injury in elite pitchers. It's kind of reiterating the other study. Peak velocity recorded at the high school uh, showcases events is the strongest predictor of UCL in elite pitchers. I just read that. Achieving fastball velocity thresholds of 90 to 92 at the high school showcase event significantly increase the likelihood of UCL in, in the elite pitchers. Young, younger age at first of the high school showcases and younger age achieving 90 plus in high school showcases significantly increase the likelihood of early Tommy John uh, surgery compared to late those who waited longer. So it's that combination of doing showcase events, throwing hard and doing it younger. So there's an, so let's, let's step back here. So what is happening in our travel ball culture, in our showcase culture in America, is that there is a competitive need or there's an incentive to throw hard, throw young, and showcase it often. And so therefore, there's obvious, obvious, there has to be some type of, uh, there has to be some type of um, uh, association that young kids have that if they can throw 90 plus young and showcase that frequently that's going to be their success in in their career obvious because there's a boom in doing this is this happening in the dominican republic i don't or, or any latin country i don't have the answers for that yes those players in the dominican republic are throwing harder probably than americans at a younger age but are they doing it in an obsessive um, you know, schedule or lineup to do it in showcases as often as possible. No, I would say no. I would say it's more in a controlled environment. I was talking to Alex and Alex even said, if an academy in the Dominican Republic has an elite player, they actually want to not showcase and put them out too much because he might be kind of more, it'd be easier for some other organization to persuade him to come over or to leave them. And, and you know, over there in the Dominican Republic, those academies get paid by, through, a, through an agreement through their signing bonuses. So they don't want to lose those players because that's how they get paid. So they actually keep them hidden. So I would say there is a big difference in the Dominican as opposed to in America. And when you get a young kid throwing hard, you actually want to not showcase them. You want to keep them private and you want to let the academy get interest and negotiate and, and, and get him an opportunity to play pro ball and make, and make some money. In America, the players are wanting to showcase because that's where they're being seen and they're wanting to be showcased a lot because they feel like that's going to give them more opportunity. So that's the problem. That's where we have a real problem in our country in this culture of baseball. We need to somehow educate the young player that they don't need to be showcased if they're throwing 95 and 15 they don't need to be showcased obsessively they can be working with someone a manager at that point to help guide their career and they don't need to constantly obsessively put themselves out there because they're getting hurt that's a huge problem here they're getting hurt and i would be interested to see if there's any studies of that increase in injury has created a fall in players, those elite players getting to a major league level are because they're getting injured early, trying to showcase themselves at high velocity are all of a sudden there's less chance that they're making it to the professional or the big league level. And I would say yes, because if you're 15 years old, injuring yourself, having to have Tommy John surgery, I mean, you can really only have about two Tommy John surgeries. And then the third one's really, really challenging to overcome and come back from. So is, is that going to be the decline? And I believe it's somewhere exists in there. So we have to basically rip this apart. I believe we have to tear apart our showcase system, our travel ball system, and somehow 
teach these young players by, that they don't need to constantly showcase to get themselves to a high level. So what do these, travel or, these travel organizations need to in, educate players to not play so frequently because we're going to see more studies here that, you know, for example, association between parental understanding of pitch guidelines and youth baseball injuries. So this study said pitchers are at an increased risk of injury compared with non-pitchers. Parents who are knowledgeable about the pitch smart throwing guidelines and actively follow them are significantly less likely to have a child with an injury. Excessive showcase participation is a prediction of player injury with the anal analysis controls for age. Okay, so this study is saying if parents were better educated on, on pitch smart, pitch smart is guidelines of health. It doesn't have to be just pitch smart across the board. If parents were better educated and they're better educated on, hey, you have a real talented kid. He's throwing very hard, very young. You don't need to be keep throwing him out there in, in showcases. There's, to me, a 100% better chance that this kid is going to fully play out a healthy career and that's not necessary. He's still going to get all the opportunities that he is capable of getting, even if he's not obsessively showcased. And we, you need to do better things and, and working with uh, a local organization on, on helping them get scouted and recruited at those levels. It doesn't have to be an obsessive, I got to go to this showcase, this guy's showcase, this showcase. So I believe that's the answer here, and that, that's what needs to go on. I think travel organizations need to do a better job of educating the parents like this, not pushing them to overplay, not pushing them to, um, um, you know, feel like they have to go to this, go to this go showcase, this showcase. They should have an advisor, someone that actually lays things out for them that are not just on them getting their best exposure, but also getting the, the least amount of wear and tear through their life. And they need to focus more on player development. And this is where player development comes in. Yes, velocity was a factor, but velocity is important for them to play at those levels. So velocity needs to be taught healthy. You can't take velocity away. It's, it changes the speed of the game and it's more sought at the higher level and always will be. There's way more to it, definitely. But they need to be educated on how to develop healthy velocity. Therefore, they need time away from playing all year round, off seasons like they would do in the Dominican Republic and develop their skill and develop their physical abilities and understand how to keep them healthy and how to use them. And, and how to use them for a long period of time through a long career. That's what needs to be taught and needs to be promoted out of these travel organizations. And if travel ball and showcase ball doesn't calm down and things don't start to flip more towards player development, I believe we're gonna continue to see the decline and we're gonna continue to see the countries that have done a better job in player development, like the Dominican Republic and Latin countries, we're gonna see those countries boom and continue to dominate the game. Because even if you compare Latin countries to the Asian countries, the Latin countries are doing a better job. There's still more of them there because I believe the Asian countries are playing too much and have too much wear and tear, too much repetitive playing and not enough training and physical development. So I hope that helps. I hope if you have any questions on that, post them down here. Just look through those studies, guys. You're not going to find any studies that say showcase baseball is really good, specifically for health, or even I don't believe you're going to see it's good for recruiting. It, it, what comes down to recruiting is talent. If you're talented, that's what's going to get you to the next level. And talent is developed in an offseason, in a player developer approach. It's showcased in a season. So don't overly play. Find a better balance in your yearly scheduling of offseason, preseason, in season. And Let's start preventing travel organizations and coaches. Let's do a better job of setting these players up for long futures as opposed to these short-lived uh, you know, careers that unfortunately uh, are hurting us on, on a national scale. So I hope you enjoyed that. Once again, if you have any questions, leave them there, and we'll see you next time.